Hello and welcome to today's Shorts Roundtable. I'm Paul Sloop, the Short Films Programming Manager for the Cleveland International Film Festival, or as most of you know me, the Shorts Guy. I'll be hosting today's talk. And before we get started, we want to take a moment to offer special thanks to PNC for sponsoring our Filmmaker Conversations content throughout this year's festival. On today's roundtable, we'll be joined by filmmakers representing some of the films playing as part of Local Hero Shorts Program 2. So with that in mind, allow me to welcome our guests to today's conversation. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, to get us started, I'd like uh, to give you each a turn. Let's go in the clockwork uh, fashion here and introduce yourself, your film, what your role was on the film and where you're calling in from today. We'll start with Andrew. All right. Hi, uh, I'm Andrew Gorell. I am the director and one of the producers on Bench Warmers. Um, I am calling in from Cleveland, Ohio, here in my uh, lovely living room. Hello, everyone. My name is Cornell Calhoun III. I am the writer and director and producer of the film A Raging Silence, and I'm from Cleveland, Ohio. Hi, um, my name is Maddie Stambler. I'm the director and editor on Who Fights For You. Uh, and but uh, though I was raised in Cleveland, Ohio, um, and uh, oh, sorry, um, but I am in Atlanta, Georgia, though I was raised in Cleveland, Ohio. <laughs> Hi, uh, my name is Mike Went, and I am the producer of Hobby. I am currently calling from beautiful North Ridgeville, Ohio, as I am getting ready to enjoy a drive-in movie tonight. Hey, y'all. I'm Nicholas Maher. Um, I'm director, editor, and producer of You and the Thing That You Love. I'm calling from Chicago, Illinois. Well, is, it, is there ever going to be a better Q&A when somebody's actually at the movies doing their Q&A before they start watching the movies? <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Um, okay, so the, the first thing we'd like to ask each of you is to take a moment to share what was the inspiration uh, for making this film or what led you to make this particular film? And again, we'll start with Andrew. Great. Uh, yeah, so uh, our film Benchwarmers is based on the experience of the writer, Jeff, uh, Jeffrey Grover, um, and all of our experience, uh, experiences here dealing with loss during this pandemic, during, dealing with not only loss, but disconnection uh, within ourselves, our families, and our loved ones. Um, yeah, that's, that's how we started with this, and, uh, and you saw, obviously, how we, how we dealt with it. Great. Thank you, Andrew. Cornell? Um, kind of mixed... Uh... We had a, a lifeguard at the YMCA. His name was Chris, and uh, he just had this. He just had this look every Saturday morning when I was at the Y. I said, you know, this guy would be great for a film. And so um, I started putting it together in terms of you know what Chris could do, and then I always incorporate a Cleveland youth in my film. So I put together an idea of uh, Chris being a drug dealer who had a young sister who wanted to um, get into this exclusive art school and they denied her uh, the privilege of getting in. And so everything just fell into place from there. Inspiration for these come from so many different places. <laughs> Thank you so much, Cornell. Maddie. Well, um, this film has been um, a long time in the making. Uh, the Darian, the you know the main subject in the film, and I have been friends since kindergarten, so that's like twenty years now. Um, and you know, we we've maintained like an incredible friendship over these twenty years, despite you know going to different schools at certain points and me moving you know out of Ohio. Um, but since honestly, since the eighth grade, I've the two of us has, have talked about um, making a film about his life just because I know having, you know, I grew up going when he was first ordained um, as a preacher at, you know, at the age of 12 or 13, I was there, you know, filming his sermons. And so this has just been something that's been a long time in the making. We've been talking about it for a really, really long time. But it really was when, you know, I've always known I wanted to do filmmaking, but it was in college um, when our paths sort of diverged. And I went off to college and Darian stayed, I think he was finishing high school and he stayed in Cleveland, that I sort of realized, you know, um, that I really wanted to explore Darian's life from his perspective. And so 
that's really you know where the inspiration for the film came from um and telling this telling letting darian tell his own story in this film was really important to me it's great it, it's a very inspirational film and i found myself when reading your backstory in the making of the film like yeah there's another film in that <laughs> story too i think right right uh, here you go <laughs> just planting the seed there yeah <laughs> thank you Maddie. mike um, so, uh, Hobby and directed by my good friend, Jesse P. and, um, she got inspired by, she was listening to NPR one day and, uh, there was this story about, um, competitive hobby horse racing, which is huge in, in Europe. Um, so she thought of a scenario kind of Christopher guest style where, you know, what if a mom or, uh, was, was like saw this heard this story and thought that her her daughter could be the star of hobby horse in america um so uh as you know as you as you've seen you know hilarity ensues but um you know i i think uh, jesse just uh, this is um i think our third film now at um at sif but you know she just has this good eye for for comedy and um in to, to get to do a mockumentary was something that we've always kind of talked about. And, you know, now that we finally got to do it, you know, we're hoping to, you know, maybe expand on it. It's hard not to chuckle just thinking about the film. So <laughs> thank you for sharing, Mike. Nicholas. Uh, yeah, so I, I met um, the subject of, of our short doc, uh, Nick Mullins, after reading a, um, a newspaper article about him in a Detroit magazine. Um, and I just, the story about this, this young uh, amateur borderline pro skater uh, losing his sight at, you know, 16, 17 years old um, was just such an incredible thing uh, to, to try to wrap my head around. Uh, and I, I don't even know if I was necessarily searching for a story, but once I, somebody put me in touch with him and once I, uh, I talked to Nick, um, it was like, it was so... It was, it was just so evident. It was, it was like somebody had to tell this guy's story and I, I was kind of shocked that it hadn't been done. Um, and he's like the nicest, most humble guy. He was down in Bowling Green at the time. So I would just, I would drive down on the weekends. I was in Detroit at the time and we started piecing together the story and it took two years, but I had, like as we were building it and as we were doing it, he was just like the most inspiring person. And he just, he's the whole film. You know, he's everything you want in a character and a hero. And the more we did, the more we got inspired and we just, we just built it from there. It's, it's, his is a great story and we're really glad you shared it and, and made the film totally like you said. Um, the other thing that I would ask each of you to share with us is, you know, if we were in person, it's always so great to tell this to the audience and just assume they're there. Um, just one story from your film, something they'd like to know about the, you know, behind the scenes, something that happened, a challenge you overcame. This can be anything because only you guys know what the, the, the funnest story to share with the audience would be that they won't otherwise know about your film and give them some, some background. So once again, we'll start with Andrew. Great. Um, when we were casting it, I got to work with someone I'd always wanted to work with, uh, Mariah Burks, who we went to the same um, grad school. Uh, she was about six years after I left. And the, the chance to be able to work with somebody who shares the same teachers and shares the same vocabulary was really exciting for, for, for me as a director. I felt like that, that able, was able to kind of not take shortcuts, but be able to have a shorthand of, of how to speak to each other, especially when we were doing it all in, in one day of shooting, one very hot day uh, at Lakewood Park. And um, <laughs> the one thing that you didn't get into the film was uh, where the biting flies. And I don't know why, but the biting flies only bit Jeff Grover, uh, the guy who plays the father. Uh, he would be finished with the scene and then all of a sudden he just <laughs> disappear off. Uh, sla slapping his 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 uh, his calves with these biting flies, so it, it got up to like ninety degrees that day. So um, <laughs> that was uh, that was probably the most challenging part. Uh, but luckily, I've worked with Jeff a bunch. We've done many films here that that have been shown at SIF, and we're going to continue to do films. And also, just be able to work with someone like Mariah kind of got us through some of those challenges. 
great. It, it seems like uh, we've heard more than once that it seems like people that set out to shoot films this summer have picked the hot days because we've heard that a couple of times throughout this. So thank you, Andrew. Cornell. Uh -huh. um, yeah, just a side note. I, I've worked with Jeff uh, several times, Jeffrey Grover, I, and I got to mention, I got to tell him about that the next time we talk. <laughs> um, but probably the funniest situation, I had a... Um, I had a five-year-old in my film. I had about eight kids in the film, but I had a five-year-old in the film who had never actually performed before, ever. She was the granddaughter of a friend of mine. And the first time I met her, she was just so, um, she was so cute. And I said, you know, we should put her in the film. And so um, we gave her, we gave her like one line. But she was so good, we wound up giving her a couple. But the first scene we shot with her was just fantastic. She was just incredible. But, you know, even though it was a short film, you know, shooting takes a while. So I would say her second scene was probably like two hours after the first. So we've got her on set in the second scene and we're rolling, and she just gets up and walks off, gets, walks off <laughs> of the set. And I'm like, Alyssa, where are you going? And she says, I'm, I'm going to get some ice cream. <laughs> so, okay. so we let her go get the ice cream, we brought her back, and then she was fine. But I mean, it was just, because everybody, the sound, everyone's there, we're shooting, and the scene's going great. You know, we shot it twice, and this was the best time, and she just gets up, and walks off. So. Uh, that's great. That's a great story. It's, I can see making the checklist for the next day. Okay, who's got the ice cream on hand? You got it ready? Because we're going to need that. Great story, Cornell. Thank Thanks. you. Maddie. Um, I think uh, mine's kind of short, but I think that, um, you know, I worked really, really hard to like make sure that the fan family was really happy, you know, with how they were portrayed on camera and, you know, how the final film came together. And it's funny, the like the one comment that they had was that, they'd wished I'd said something um, about the sheets in Darian's bedroom because they would have wanted to change them for the final <laughs> cut of the film. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that, that's my funny little anecdote. But I'll say um, it was really, you know, fun and exciting and challenging um, working with, you know, somebody I consider to be my best friend. I think we're, we, were, we are both stubborn and opinionated. Um, and I think we, we, were, we worked on this film really together as a team. And, um, you know, I think it took a lot of push and pull with Darian, but, it, you know, in the end, I think we came up with something that uh, we, we're both really proud of, so. Great, great, Maddie, thank you. Mike, dusk is coming, your film's gonna start soon, so unmute yourself and tell us <laughs> tell us your anecdote that isn't related to being at the drive-in right now. <laughs> uh, so the, the uh, actress who played Lane in the film, um, you know, we, we had her, uh, dealing with a live horse and, um, now she is used to working with horses, but this horse had never really, uh, been on camera. And I mean, we did have an advisor there, but, uh, you know, there were a couple of times where we got the sense that the horse was going to run off <laughs> or, uh, <laughs> then, um, kick back. But, uh, but thankfully after, after a couple different takes, uh, our, uh, you know, the horse complied, and as soon as, uh, much like, um, you know, the the other, uh, the, the girl in Cornell's story, the horse ran off and, uh, you know, went about their day. But, uh, you know, it was working with. <laughs> That's great. Horses, whether real or pretend, can be tricky, right? <laughs> Nicholas. Yeah, that's pretty. I don't have any anything like anybody running off set, which is pretty fun. But uh, I guess something interesting about about our doc was, and something that I, I didn't really foresee was um, trying to work through a a piece of art, a visual piece of art, with somebody who can't see. And um, Nick and I were really the only two people that made this film, and that's why it took so long. So. You know, it's, it's it's it was really interesting trying to describe to him like what these scenes are, and you know, if I sent him like an edit, you know, he's like, oh, he would always say, oh, I want to see it, you know, like show me, I want to see it, and it's really he's just listening to like the sound designer, you know, he's listening to the the VO or or the just kind of the narrative of the story, um, 
but he was, it was fascinating because he was always so excited about what he was, he was hearing or, you know, what, what to him, like he was seeing. And it's just like, a, it was such a hurdle that I never expected trying to describe to him, like these scenes that I was, I was trying to, to put together to explain like what he was having in his head, like, you know, what he, he actually sees as somebody without sight. Um, so it was just all these hurdles that I, I was not totally prepared for, but um, like a huge learning opportunity. And really at the end of everything, we really got to know each other quite well. And um, I think that was probably part of it too, just like learning how to communicate uh, in it just like a pretty new and fascinating way, so. Those are great stories, everybody. Yeah. Thank you for sharing them from Detroit, Atlanta, Cleveland, and the drive-in in, in North Richmond. Yeah. <laughs> no, seriously, thank you all so much for sharing your stories and insights on your films. We sincerely appreciate it. And on behalf of CIFF, allow me again to thank you so much for joining us for tonight's roundtable. We also want to thank you, our audience, for joining us for today's Shorts Roundtable. Without your ongoing support, we couldn't be here to help you bring film home. We hope you'll consider supporting our challenge match again this year, presented by Cuyahoga Arts and Culture to support the future of our festival. Our goal this year is to reach $145,000 and we are grateful in advance for any amount you're able to contribute to make a donation or to purchase tickets or to check out our full schedule of filmmaker conversations at this year's festival. Please visit our website at clevelandfilm.org. With that in mind, please stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll look forward to seeing you back here again very soon. Thank you all so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Thank you.